Well, I'm afraid I've done a pretty pants job of filming this part of the project. I've done like little bits here and there. I mean, it's 10 o'clock now uh, on a Sunday night. I just want to get a little bit done because I, I need to get those cabinets fitted and a few other bits. So uh, what we've got is a heavy duty, uh, whatever they're called, it's scrubbable matte paint. It's the cornflower blue or what, cornflower white, whatever it is, by Dulux. We've used it in the house in a couple of places. So it's, uh, it's pretty light and bright. I'm going to go around, hopefully get the first coat everywhere done today, second coat tomorrow, then I can get the cabinets up in the evening. Here's where we are with the utility area. I've got two 500 units to go up on the wall, uh, right up against the ceiling. We're a little bit low on the ceiling uh, this end, so they need to be tucked right up. Uh, then we're going to have a big worktop, it's three meter, uh, 2.8 meters uh, wall to wall. And then I've picked up a decent sized sink. Now it's kind of a bit bigger than I'd imagined, but it's pretty good for soaking clothes and things like that, just above the laundry area. Right, this evening's job is to get these cabinets up. Uh, I've got a 500 mil cabinet left and right of this window. The idea is that I will use what I've got, which is these basic off the shelf white um, carcasses. I will then put end panels on, scrub to the wall and ceiling and probably build like a bulkhead up here with some lighting in it. But first up, it's just a case of all the measuring out, leveling out. I've got a nice flat ceiling, just check that. So I'm gonna do identical to what I've just done on the other side. Originally I was planning to have the cabinets a little bit lower on the wall so I could carry a pelmet like corner section across the front uh, of both. Unfortunately, where I put the fan over on that side, the little extractor fan is a little bit high so I had to stay above that. Um, so we'll have to go a little bit bespoke on what we do up there. But for now, I know that I need to be 12 mil down from the ceiling at the back edge. So I'll mark that up and then we'll just come in our dimensions that are set out in the instructions. Uh, 27.5 mil in for our first screw. There's one bit of advice I could give you when it comes to fitting anything quite precise like this is use a ruler not a tape measure because there's just no way if you're trying to bend it and it's just it's just not going to happen and of course if you've got your super duper laser levels and all that jazz then you could set that up but for one or two cabinets it it's not really too much bother to do this and of course we've got a little bit of adjustment in our fixings. Behind our plasterboard we've got 25mm of insulation but then we've got a huge great big timber beam across here so what we can do is just use some long screws. I'm going to screw it, drill through the plasterwork first so we don't blow it all and crack it and then we'll go through with those long screws and it'll pick up on the wood, clamp it tight and that's going to give us a really solid anchor point. Now if you're wondering about this door behind me, it's not permanent, it's simply blocking up our outside opening uh, and we just screw it shut. It will be repurposed, so this is one of the original doors out of the house where we knocked down a wall and I'll be trimming it down and fitting it into the internal wall, uh, internal door lining at some point. These are the cabinets, and do you know what I mean? Supposedly these are guaranteed for 25 years. I'm no professional kitchen fitter, but if I had my way, I probably would. Yeah, anything with a solid back is gonna give you much more strength and rigidity. Anyway, we can't be fussy. All it's gonna house is dog food and laundry detergents. So we're going up onto the wall. Hopefully we're going to get it over the back on the first try. Those little hooks, I didn't really show you a close up, there's a little a claws on the back of these uh, clips at the top. Now they protrude out the back and they hook over those brackets we put on 
And now this is, I mean, this is basic level stuff, but you know, if, if you are trying to put a cabinet or two up yourself, now we've got the adjustment screws in here. I'll give you a shot of those. You've got the screws here. This screw here is what will pull the cabinet in tight against the wall or back it out again. And this one at the bottom here gives a little bit of rise and fall adjustment so you can uh, make sure that everything's uh, level. And as we tighten that, it'll pull in the back edge of this flush into the wall. Now if, our, if your wall is off, you know, and it's not perfectly flat and, and plumb, like many houses, especially if it's an older house or if you did the plastering yourself like here, um, then you, you could go along and scribe the actual cabinet. But because we're going to be facing these, we're going to be putting a, a kind of an end board on these panels that we'll make up ourselves. Now I'll just scribe back to the wall so it'll sit perfectly flush against there and be flush with the front. And the same at the top when we go up to the ceiling. But ordinarily, you know, you just gotta hope you've got a nice flat wall. And if you've got a long bank of cabinets, then you're only ever gonna see the last one. You can go a little bit up in that corner. There we go, it's not pretty. We've got both cabinets up. Like I was saying, up here, this is a temporary little light here, but up here we'll have a, a sort of bulkhead built across. Don't know what you call that, an overhead, a bit like you might have over a cooker hood type thing. Only, I don't know, 100 mil deep with a trim piece that joins the two over the top and some down lights are set in it. And if we do that all in you know, some nice timber we make up in the workshop, spray it all and paint it all the same, then I think it could look quite nice, even though we know the bones of it are uh, rather, you know. And of course I painted before I put them up, because the last thing you want to be doing is having to mask brand new cabinets to paint. So there may be a little bit of touch up work we can do around them, but the ceiling's finished and all of the surrounding paintwork is done. We'll be tiling underneath once the work top's in, but that's a whole different story. All right, it's been a real mixture of jobs over the last day or two. Uh, today, I'm trying to get this toilet finished off. Um, six years on and we're finally having a, a downstairs toilet, albeit you've got to go outside to get back in at the moment. Um, cabinet's gonna go in once it's built. So all that's gonna come through is a little bit of 15 mil and then a little flexi, and it'll be hidden behind here. Uh, toilet's gonna shift across. It's gonna be kind of central between the shower and the cabinet. So it's quite compact in here but hopefully all the measurements should work out. girl's last day of summer holidays today and for some reason that meant I deserved a homemade ice cream sundae which I won't complain about. Oh brain freeze. Right while I'm uh, continuing with my new diet the the truth is I made a bit of a mistake with the flooring. Flooring went down the last few days and as I was knocking in the laminate because it continues through the room. As I was knocking it in over on this side in the hallway corridor bit, I've obviously just slowly knocked the whole room off laminate because it's floating. So I've actually come away probably three, four, five mil more from the shower tray and the toilet area than I need to be. The whole lot needs to go back that way. 
Problem is, I've now got a tumble dryer, washing machine, freezer, all sat on it. So I've somehow got to try and lift those bits into areas where we don't have the laminate and then shift the whole lot across. Ugh. I should have wedged around the perimeter a little bit more so it couldn't go anywhere, but they've obviously fallen out. Good, so I think that's pretty much even all the way around. I'm going to put some wedges in now so it won't move. And then I can put all the appliances back in. Now we need to get on and silicon down all of the edges uh, where it's going to seal and we can't get to after the toilet's gone in. Then the toilet can go in and then we can move on to the shower enclosure. <coughs> So the next video will most likely be all the silicon sealing, all the fiddly stuff and putting myself inside a taxidermy cabinet. But until then, thanks for watching, remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. <laughs>